In this video, we go through some studies that assessed catalinium in the assessment of scaphoid fractures and especially the vitality assessment of the proximal fragment. Before you watch this video, you might want to watch the video on scaphoid fractures that I did previously. You can check the link down in the description. Now, I picked four or five different scientific reports about gadolinium use in the assessment of proximal scaphoid poles and we go through them and have a look at what the studies are saying basically. Why is vitality assessment important? Often if in a non-union situation the proximal fragment is considered necrotic preoperatively on MRI, the surgeon might want to use a vascularized bone graft instead of a non-vascularized bone graft. Now let's have a look at the first study by Donati et al. published in Radiology. You can find the link down in the description. In that study, the authors compared standard MRI with dynamic gadolinium enhanced MRI for the assessment of the proximal pole. I referenced this study already in one of my previous videos about scaphoid fractures. And if you haven't checked it out, please do. I put the link down in the description. This study was a retrospective study with 28 patients, all pretty young, with a mean age of 24 years, and all these patients had a non-union of the scaphoid after a fracture. They all underwent surgery, and all patients were scanned with a dynamic gadolinium-enhanced MRI preoperatively. And with dynamic gadolinium MRI, they meant 40 consecutive coronal T1-weighted images over a time period of 60 seconds. This was performed in addition to a standard protocol with late enhancement of gadolinium. Now, two readers assessed the proximal scaphoid fragment on the standard protocol, and then a third reader measured the slope of gadolinium enhancement in the dynamic sequence in the proximal pole. The surgical procedure was performed, and during this, that procedure, the puncture bleeding at the fracture site served as the reference standard regarding the vitality of the fragment. In 11 patients they also performed additional histopathology. So the question they tried to answer in this study was whether the dynamic gadolinium enhancement in the proximal pole would actually improve the diagnostic performance of MRI to assess the vitality of the proximal fragment in non-unions. And let's have a look at the results here. Standard MRI for scaphoid necrosis showed a sensitivity of 54%, specificity of 93% and an accuracy of 75% for reader 1, with similar results for reader 2. The inter-reader agreement was actually excellent with a kappa value of 0.92. The area under the curve was 0.82 for reader 1 and 0.87 for reader 2. The value of the slope of gadolinium uptake was actually worse than standard MRI for the vitality assessment, with an AOC of only 0.57. In addition, histopathology findings did not correlate with dynamic gadolinium enhancement. So they concluded that dynamic gadolinium enhanced MRI does not improve diagnostic performance of MRI. Now what I found interesting in this paper was the histopathology. In two out of the 11 patients where material was sent to the pathologist, the results were not valid. So that leaves us with only nine results. And if you look at the table that I try to reconstruct here, and you look at the percentage of vital bone versus necrotic bone, you realize that it most often a mixture of both. So you not really have a binary outcome of completely vital bone or completely necrotic bone. So it's a mix of both. And this is also reflected on MRI if you look carefully, because sometimes you see patchy enhancement and areas of enhancement and areas without enhancement. So be very specific and detailed in your description. Therefore, we have a big problem if we only try to answer the question for vitality of the proximal pole in a binary fashion as either a vital fragment or a necrotic fragment. That is a problem many of these studies face and also results in these not very consistent findings, actually. Okay, let's move on to the next study here by Megerle et al. with the title Gadolinium Enhanced Preoperative MR Scans as a Prognostic Parameter in Scaphoid Non-Union. Again, it's an older study, 2011, 
and they compared preoperative gadolinium enhanced MRI with intraoperative bleeding of the proximal fragment in 60 consecutive patients with scaphoid non-union. So that's actually quite a large sample size. Scaphoid perfusion was rated as either normal, impaired or absent on gadolinium enhanced MRI and all patients underwent scaphoid reconstruction using a non-vascularized bone graft and also screw fixation. The scaphoid was intraoperatively assessed for vitality in only 49 of these patients. What they found was that compromised or absent vascularity intraoperatively was predicted with a specificity of 90% in MRI, similar to the previous study we have seen. What is interesting in this paper is this. There was no relevant correlation between preoperative MRI assessment of the vascularity and vitality of the pole of the proximal pole and the subsequent union of the scaphoid after screw fixation with a non-vascularized graft. And basically that was one of the purposes of this study to assess this correlation. In more detail, 10 of 11 patients with necrotic fragments on preoperative MRI healed completely after non-vascularized bone grafting. The author speculated that maybe MRI fails to detect minor perfusion in the proximal pole that would already be sufficient for healing. On the other hand, if intraoperatively the puncture bleeding was negative, meaning that after puncture of the fracture site no blood was coming out upon releasing the tunicat, then the healing rate was much lower. So this would mean that the puncture bleeding is still probably the best or one of the better ways to assess the vitality, because it correlates with the healing rates. But again, it's an older study and they did not assess vascularized bone grafts. Now let's have a look at the next study by Schmidt et al. A vascular necrosis of the proximal fragment in scaphoid non-union. Is intravenous contrast agent necessary in MRI? What they did was they compared preoperative MRI with regards to enhancement, rated as either non, focal or diffuse, but also non-enhanced MRI with intraoperative puncture bleeding at the osteotomy site. And again, intraoperatively it was rated as either absent, moderate or good. And this was done in 88 patients, so quite a large sample size here again. And they found that gadolinium improved the diagnostic performance actually. So use contrast enhanced MRI for the vitality assessment of proximal fragments because bone marrow edema alone and the T1 signal alone are inferior indicators of vitality. I have shown you in my other scaphoid fracture videos an explanation for the different signal patterns on the different sequences that also support this conclusion basically. Moving on, Renzi et al. published a study with the title Success of Scaphoid Non-Union Surgery is Independent of Proximal Pole Vascularity. That is one of the newer studies from 2018 with an interesting conclusion. They had 35 consecutive patients preoperatively assessed with MRI and then intraoperatively with puncture bleeding and all of them were operated with non-vascularized grafts. On MR, 9 of the 35 proximal poles were considered ischemic but not necessarily infarcted and intraoperatively 28 of 33 showed an impaired vascularity. So it's quite a difference there. But nevertheless, 33 of 35 of these patients had complete healing after 12 weeks. And the authors concluded that proximal pole infarction is actually rare and that vascularized bone grafting is not really required that often. I leave the surgical stuff to surgeons, but nevertheless, I think that's an interesting question there. To sum up, I would suggest gadolinium enhanced MRI for the vitality assessment of proximal pole fragments in scaphoid non-union and also try to use a detailed description, where it is enhancing, whether it's a patchy enhancement or whether it's diffuse or absent or diminished or whether it's not present at all basically and try not to answer this binary question of either a vital fragment or a necrotic fragment. Ideally if you can talk to your hand surgeon and see what he thinks and what he really wants to know from your MR imaging preoperatively and how this impacts his decision to use either a non-vascularized or a vascularized bone graft.